This is um, in Zorings during the trial here uh, in Bedford County next door. Um, this his attorney, and the attorney, I can't remember his name, it's on this, but I can't see it, but he um, actually, Cleveland was a local attorney, but the other attorney, forgotten his name, um, he actually said during the trial that he chose, uh, he would, it's almost like you can't get someone to represent you, like they won't represent me, I can't get an attorney, but anyway, he said he represented Yens, and uh, in other words, I, he mentioned repercussions, but then um, he did. He lost his license. I believe he was from um, Michigan, and he ended up in Florida, and they had taken his license to practice law, and uh, I'll leave it there. I don't really know what happened to him for doing the right thing, and I was, I'm not going to go any further on that. It's so much that you say, and then people, I don't know. Uh, this is Elizabeth. It's her parents that were killed, Derek and Elizabeth Hasem, in, um, outside of Lynchburg, uh, Bedford County. Now, I in 1983, just prior to being out at Mr. Flint's, who helped me in that campaign I've talked about, and involved mind control, and the man that shot him was programmed to shoot him. This is Yen's a diplomat's son with the glasses on, and uh, he's in Goochland, or what, well, no, she's in Goochland, I think she still is, Elizabeth, and um, he is in Buckingham, I believe, uh, Virginia State Prison. For murders they didn't commit, and he's a diplomat, son. Now, the part that this is Sweeney, the judge, who's retired, and um, the reason I'm putting this up, uh, the video I just put up about Elizabeth and the cousins, she's an illegal monarch, so I'm not going to give her the Elizabeth II or anything. She needs, She's a war criminal. She's illegal. But the, I put it up with... Uh, cousins being put in by the way this is the year they kidnapped me i'm victoria the second heir to the british crown born in 39 so they kidnapped me in 41 and i saw it here that's when these two cousins which are probably cousins of mine if they're her cousins were left neglected it's an intriguing intriguing documentary reveals all HTMI it has down here. And I put this up on the other video. The thing was that I, I would, um, didn't complete what I was talking about about Yen, so I put this um, up again as number two. <coughs> uh, let me say this, and if it's bouncing around, I, I'm trying to make it... Uh, it's a little hard sometimes, the subject matter. Um, okay, I'm going to turn this around. Um, I was telling about in 19, was that 1987 or uh, 88 when I went up to, um, on the Blue Ridge Parkway. <coughs> I was talking about the pond and fishing and had not a fishing pole or had to get a cane, found the line and hook and uh, found some that had been disposed in the tree or whatever on the ground and was able to, if you call it, survive. And I boiled them. I had nothing um, to put on them. I ate, <laughs> I ate leaves and um, et cetera, fished with salamanders, which may have been, I don't know, but snails and worms. But anyway, the point was that I told I'm going to retell it so that it um, makes sense. Jens was German diplomat's son, and Elizabeth I met, and I'll be redundant here, in 19... Well, I didn't uh, meet her. I was sent out from Hawkins. I was in the campaign, had a campaign headquarters in uh, Marietta, I had become a candidate in the uh, special election to replace Congressman Dr. Larry McDonald. 
who had gone down in the KAL uh, August 31st of 83. Of course, Mr. Flint was in my book that didn't get published. I'd never met him, but um, the person that shot him was programmed. He was shot in... I mean, he's, um, from his neck down, he's paralyzed. And I believe the judge was killed, or his attorney, and the other one, the judge, was shot uh, and hurt badly. Oh, but anyway, uh, I worked for a Hawkins agency. It was where I had the campaign headquarters, and they were across the hall from me. Um, they sent me out to... I know the school, Love it, Lovell, uh, it was a private school because when I worked for doctors, when I was doing this book in Xerox, which I put up, um, telling about mind control and chips and Dixon, Tom, uh, Dixon Produce, uh, one chairman of the board, that was Gary Dixon, it was uh, the president of Fair Show. So the doctor I worked for back then, I'm doing the book in 77, 76, 77, part of 78, yeah. Well, a year, uh, a year for them. Xerox did and everything. And uh, anyway, the Dixon, I ended up going there to work, and that's where I saw the papers, insurance papers, and et cetera, et cetera. And I knew part of it, but that they'd put a chip in him. Anyway, I'm going to lose it there if I'm not careful. Anyway, uh, back to Yens. Um, I was sent out to, oh, I did, let me make my point there. I did books for the doctors. There were, well, two of them. There were three, uh, McCoy, Forsyth, and, uh, are you kidding me? I I can't remember his name. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm gonna lose it again here. Trying to go back and forth. Went to work. I was doing the book, the campaign headquarters, and sent out to Love at School, and that's where the coach was, and I was supposed to talk to uh, uh, Yens and. He was flying in, and Chad, I remember the name Chad. Uh, anyway, I in the books I did for the doctors, I did also the pri- some of the private. I wrote checks to Lovett or Lovell School, and the private school, and that's where their children went, and that's where Yens uh, went, and that's where I was sent. Then later, I'm up here and got in the campaign and lived in pump gas and all that up in grottos and then I came well there was some time in between I was just put on the side of the road again when the car uh, turned it back in that uh, Larry Flynn had furnished and oh so I was really no job no way to carry things Uh, finally got a backpack so I could keep the few pictures of my kids and some papers together but the point really I'm going to get to was I lived up um, this was in 86, I mean 87 or 88, actually went up on the Blue Ridge Parkway and across uh, from Cornelius Shelter, it's a hiker's shelter, so people around here know where it is. It's from the Parkway and Road Oak at uh, the lodge up there. Um, it's about seven miles up, and you turn to the right. If you go in north, it goes into Lynchburg and uh, Glasgow and everything. Uh, but there's about a half a mile back there, a mile, this place to cut off, and there was a pond at dead end back there. And quite frankly, I was it was horrible. I froze. I didn't really have any gear or anything, but it's better than being put on the side of the road and being afraid you're going to be raped or... Uh, killed or whatever, and freezing and starving. So anyway, um, I I mentioned on the other video I just put up that um, the uh, Bedford police come up there, sheriffs, and uh, was going to give me a bite to eat, said they'd heard about me. Uh, they took me down that night, come back up, took me down. I told about that part. There's two cars come up and scared me to death. They had the lights all over me. And 
Um, it's hard to, a little hard to get up in there. It wasn't that far from, anyway, I don't need to give you all those details. They took me down, and he had bought me hamburger, and I got to tell him it was cold. He must have bought it early that morning. This is nine, ten o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So they take me down to Bedford Jail. They sent me back there. They didn't lock me up. They put me in front of the jail cell, and I believe it was locked. I sit there for a long time until about 1 o'clock in the morning when they changed shifts. And they were nice to me. The lady brought me three cups of coffee. I love coffee. But they ended up in a van taking me back to Roanoke where I had left because I couldn't get a place to go. Took me to the Salvation Army. I got in there only because the police brought me did I get in there. Uh, and I had to sleep on a sofa that you couldn't rest on and people going around you and all that. Uh, so I ended up having to come right back up there the next day where I'd left and walk, all that. That's a long way to walk, a long haul and try to have food and everything. But anyway, um, I keep saying anyway, Yens, the very next day, when I'm going, hoofing it back up, where they'd just taken me down to Bedford and back to the Salvation Army. I believe it was the next day. I know it was the next day that they brought Yen Zorings in, he and Elizabeth, because they were going to arrest them for the murder of her parents. And they they um, had uh, fled to London and credit cards and all that. And I know Detective Beaver, so you get the name Beaver. Uh, how about that, Robert? <laughs> I never, never knew Robert's last name. I knew he was a marshal and an FBI agent. But anyway, I, I, I don't know that he's English or British or anything. I, as far as I know, Robert, it's just that I thought about that because he was so much a part of this. And also, he cut down a tree there <laughs> where I camped, and he called it the beaver tree. So you could take what I laugh because, I mean, some of it's, uh, anyway, um, uh, so they put Yens in the jail cell where they just had me in front of the night. They brought him back the next day. I think it was on a Saturday, and they must have brought him in on a Sunday. And it's not funny anything. I don't mean to uh, imply that whatsoever, what happened to Yens and Elizabeth, because they're still in prison. Oh, So it's kind of like this. You kind of can connect some things. Uh, the bringing him in, they deliberately come and got me, the timing, and then the next day Yens is brought in. And uh, is there something else I was going to tell there? I don't know. Let's see. I thought there was something else I wrote down. Um, oh, they put me, this is another time, the police put me in uh, a, a small not sofa kind of chair, and there was nothing else in the hallway that I remember. Uh, the police office was back here, and I don't know what was up there. Maybe, I don't know. But that behind me was, um, I guess it was an FBI thing of wanted people. I don't know it's quite that big, but uh, yeah, it probably was, and further down. They had a bunch of pictures up there of people wanted, and there I don't know if it I had their names, yeah. I didn't know anything about any of these. I think they deliberately put me there for that reason, because I could make heads or tails of none of these people that were wanted, and yet here I'm telling about the mind control murders, which I do know about. And I've told the truth about them. And I'm sorry if people think, well, they should, these people like the Virginia Tech who was programmed to shoot himself or some of these people should um, uh, be put away for life like Scott uh, Peterson's on death row. He's been in prison. And he was, pro that was a programmed uh, takedown. There's no doubt in my mind Um so anyway, uh, people don't like to, they want somebody to pay for it, but they want, well, let me put it this way. they <clears throat> putting the wrong people, but then the right people, uh, what's their purpose in it? I'm not too sure the 
thing that's so wrong is in the people who have allowed this to happen. And that's, people just didn't want to know. I've been told that so much. They'd say, I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Okay. Now, here's Elizabeth. Yens, his attorneys. And by the way, um, well, there's something else. I guess I am tired. I was looking at the paper here. This was in Roanoke Times World News Monday, April the 3rd, 1995. That, that was during the trial. Uh, there's something else I was going to tell, but no, I slipped my mind too, so I guess it's time for me to put this away for a day or two. I came back, and when my phone was fixed, I started uploading because I hadn't been able to use it in a while, and I'm actually tired and fatigued. Um, what well, something else I wanted to tell, though? Uh, was there something else about the... Uh, well, excuse me if I'm telling this twice... Well, by the way, I will say this. the I've put up these videos about the protest in Charlottesville and Anna, uh, Anastasia being murdered there. She was. And there's a lot of other things happened there uh, that they don't tell about. And these were murders that, Oh, they went to the University of Virginia there. This is after 83 and all that. And they had um, gone to the University of Virginia, both of them. And I moved up to Grotto's and then uh, landed up here, if you want to say it, in Roanoke in October 86. And then uh, they were brought in for the murder of her parents and all that. So I, as far as I can see, that's all I was going to tell. But if you're interested, you might Google um, Guardian, the Daily Mail. And I got this in 3217, and there was articles and pictures about it of Elizabeth. So they'd be my cousins, too. But what shocked me when I look back now, it was 1941 that... There were two cousins, at least, that were locked up when they were younger in a mental asylum. Um, nobody ever checked on them. They were just put there to die, and God knows what they did to them. Uh, while if they're probably not even alive, and there was a documentary that reveals dash all dash HTMI. I don't know if you can find it, but from there. But if you da uh, if you Google Daily Mail Guardian. UK, I I think you can pull it up. I'm sure you can. Uh, Mental Hospital and Elizabeth's Cousins. Uh, yeah. Uh, 